Why the heck does Pa keep that worthless shirker around? It just doesn't make sense. Thad Walker stood in the saloon's doorway, staring through the meager crowd's thin haze of smoke at Trampus Cheever. The ranch foreman was leaning on the bar, chatting up a saloon gal instead of doing his job, rounding up horses. Disgusted, Thad balled his right hand into a fist and, with his left, slowly pushed through the door. One of these days, he would catch Trampus doing something that was, without doubt, a firing offense. No gray areas, and finally he'd have his paws okay to give this lick spittle his last payday. Till then, Trampus! The man slid his gaze from the pretty little distraction of Thad. You were supposed to have that string of ponies ready to go first thing. You should have already been back at the ranch with them. Trampus turned toward the bar and tossed down his whiskey. I got thirsty. Thad was in no mood. A hailstorm had knocked down 20-plus acres of wheat last night. Some of the calves were showing signs of coccidiosis. Six hands had ridden out for the gold fields, and now this cocky piece of trash hadn't even strung the remuda together. The ranch was in desperate need of those fresh horses. Betty Jean, the sweet little redhead entertaining Trampus, must have seen a thundercloud forming on Thad's face. She swallowed and backed a few feet down the bar. Striking like a lightning bolt, Thad grabbed Trampus and spun him around. The man's eyebrow shot straight up. You don't respect me? That's one thing. Thad stepped in closer. But not doing your job disrespects my father. You and I are going to have to come to an understanding. Is today the day? Trampus stood up to Thad for a second, then smiled an inch back. No, sir. He grabbed his hat off the bar. I'll get right to those horses. A smirk played on a man's lips as he sidestepped Thad with a nod and departed the saloon. Thad grit his teeth, wondering when, not if, a fight was coming. Maybe not today, but Trampus was going to get that smirk knocked right off his bony face, and Thad had the fist that could do it. Ignoring the stunned silence and transfixed stares of saloon patrons, Thad stomped out on the boardwalk and paused. To his left, Trampus sauntered off toward the stockyard, long legs moving at a leisurely pace. The ranch hand's gangly frame reminded Thad of a praying mantis, and he hated bugs. Feeling more than a little surly, he scanned the street in search of his brother, but found something that lifted his mood right considerable. A pretty little strawberry blonde in a powder blue dress stood outside the bakery. He watched as she tugged on her shirt waist, adjusted her fluffy lacy sleeves, rolled her shoulders, and then stepped inside. A lot of fuss for some bread. He couldn't explain why, but he waited a minute for her to come out. When she did, the sagging slope of her shoulders told him things hadn't gone to her liking. She took a few steps with her head down, but then seemed to think better of it. She stopped, raised her chin, and marched into the general store. It didn't take a genius to figure she was probably hunting for a job. He rubbed his neck and gave serious thought to trying to intersect paths with her, but he didn't really have time. Buddy at the blacksmith shop was waiting for him. He literally wavered as he took a step towards responsibility and away from her. His weathered cowboy boots wanted to follow those petite lace-up boots. His brain wanted to take care of ranching business. Both his brothers would already be across the street, asking the young lady to join them for ice cream. And that was exactly why he was his father's right-hand man. Or at least used to be. Besides, Misery was a small town. He'd run into her again. He gained enough willpower from that to set off for the blacksmith shop, but not without one last glance back at the general store.